Hello there. This vlog's gonna be about two things, my trip to Asia and League of Legends. Or rather, maybe not about League of Legends the game itself, but more about the community that surrounds me. So normally you don't want to give attention to the bad things, but I feel like there's just so much misunderstandings that I just have to kind of say it. Because if I don't say it, then I just keep having to say the same thing over and over again. Um, this will be one of the last times I actually talk about League of Legends in a video, unless it's like I'm actually playing League of Legends in a video, because this kind of thing has been... I haven't really been clear and direct about it. I've never said I've quit League. I've said I haven't played it for a while. I said I uninstalled it, you know. But I also say stuff like, oh, maybe it'll be better next season. But yesterday, I played two two ranked games, and it was awful. But not only, not because of the gameplay, but because of the people that I played with. And that makes me think that the problem isn't so much the game, but rather the people that you play with. And that just comes to the point of, like, the bronze mentality like oh it's not me it's my team but the thing is it's such a team game that <laughs> that's i think that's where all the stress comes from but anyways we'll start with asia first we went to hong kong to for about i think five days and japan for 14 so starting with the airplane ride there it was about three hours to Chicago, and then 15 hours to Hong Kong. Um, not including the layovers, the wait times, the, the everything else. So 18 hours on a flight. <laughs> Fun, right? No. So the flight wasn't too bad because I'm kind of used to it, but at least I got good seats. So I didn't get business class, but I got economy. But we got lucky, and the person next to us didn't show up, so we got a whole row to ourselves. So that was nice. So as we went to Hong Kong, we're going there for the Return of Legend event. What that basically is, retired League of Legends players that play against each other. For example, we played against Mikako Tabe, Bebe, Go Going. I don't really know their mid laner that well, but he, he used to play. And then Insec. Um, on our team, we had Alex Each, Lemon, Hai, and Tabs. And then me. I haven't played League for like three months. So, honestly, there's no way I was going to do good, so I just played Mundo, and magically we won. Uh, mostly thanks to High's shot calling and his confident play, and on top of that, everyone else on the team were mechanically reliable, for the most part. So everyone kind of did their job, more or less, and, you know, the other team was also a little bit rusty too, but some of them actually still played. But once again, it's a team game, and what really brought everything together was high shot calling, along with, you know, input from everyone else on top of the shot calling. So it was, it was pretty good. We went 3-2. Mundo had a 100% win rate because everyone was kind of washed up, but pretty good game. As for food in Hong Kong, everything was super cheap there. For example, we had like a dinner at this local place in Hong Kong and we, we got like food for everyone and it only cost 50 bucks for like eight people, which is pretty impressive, honestly. As for other things in Hong Kong, I ordered Pizza Hut and it's fancy as fuck. I have a picture on my Instagram. One of the funny things about the Hong Kong trip is that they did the picture of me where I looked cross-eyed. It was like literally a Darius Pugers emote and... <laughs> It was a uh, it was a work of art. Um, the amount of money that we won was 100k Hong Kong dollars, which is basically like 18k USD, so like two to three k each for each of the players, which is not bad. It was all for fun, anyways, and you know, obviously, the players that came out got paid to go there in the first place. But my true intention of the trip was to go to Japan. Me and Emily went to Japan after for two weeks. Uh, the first meal we had was Ichiran Ramen. We would go in and there was a line for it. The quality of the noodles and the meat is just like so good. And the way they cook it is just, it's just amazing. They have like these timers where it needs to be heated at a specific amount of time. And when the timer goes up, they hear it and they take it out. Like stuff like that. I'm sure that's done with cooks a lot, but 
but I just don't see it publicly, I guess. The one big thing for me about Japan was the arcade. There's a game called Wonderland Wars, and it's like a MOBA where you, you have three lanes, two mid, one top, one bottom, no jungler. You draw with a pen and on, on an arcade touchscreen, and matchmaking is regional. Um, it's all skill shots, and it was super fun. What this game did to me was make, it made me want to play League again, because I played League in the Return of Legends tournament, so I was like, wow, this is, you know, this was pretty fun, you know, playing with High, Lemon, Alex, and Tabs. Like, I, I actually had fun. I was like, oh, maybe I'll give League another shot. And that's why I made the tweet uh, yesterday. I tried to rank the matches, and God, it was not worth it. Anyways, moving on from that. For the Wonderland Wars, I'll be uploading the raw footage on my second channel because it's just raw gameplay. You the you save the replay from the arcade, you go to another machine, and it has like all the replays and everything. And you just put in a USB drive, and that's how you get the gameplay from the machine. Um, it's pretty interesting if you like MOBAs. I, I honestly loved playing it, so if I... If I were to ever go back to Japan, that's the game I'd probably mostly play. It's kind of sad that I can't really play it at home. I think that's going to be one of the main things that I miss from Japan. We went to the fish market where we had sushi, which you can also find on the Instagram. Um, we went to Akihabara. They have like these anime pachinko parlor parlors, maid cafes, maids in the street, owl ca cafes, People advertising, giving out stuff. A lot of anime weeb shit. There's a couple of arcades. Mostly figurines being sold and a lot of anime stuff. Way cheaper over there than in America because sh shipping. Although nothing's translated to English, obviously, because it's Japan. So <laughs> that's the trade-off you get. We went to Rabbit Cafe. Tried a lot of the fast food places like Burger King, Taco Bell, McDonald's. And honestly, the quality of food is not that much different, but it just seems clean and less sugar healthier as weird as it sounds another ramen place we went to a place called ipudo and we had ramen there like five times the entire trip we held a fan meet at a place called yoyogi park which was like kind of a big public park and 200 fans showed up and they all brought like the signing silver paper thing that's like this board like you know the signs they hold up in lck where it's it's like uh, I love you this player or something or something like that outside my name smiley face and then person's uh, game tag name and Honestly, it was super humbling because I they're all nice and on top of that they give gave me gifts I got a lot of gifts from Japan even though I didn't hold that many fan meets my god two sake bottles one beer can I got like some snacks red bean snacks like the sandwiches I, I don't know what to call them I gave you ramen, uh, I got chopsticks, I got two figurines, uh, one of them being really expensive. I got a Nautilus keychain because one of the, the guys' main was Nautilus, and I thought that was really funny and really cool. I enjoyed that fact. But other than those gifts, I think that's it for that. Um, I hung out with some of the fans after, went to the arcade, played Wonderland Wars, played some rhythm games, and then went home. Um, a lot of my time in Japan was mostly 40% or 50% the arcade, and the rest was like going, walking around and just experiencing the area, or just staying indoors because we're tired from walking everywhere. The railways was the main way of getting around. You could buy a card called a Suka card, which is basically like when you go through the ticket thing, you just you just put the card down and you put money in the card. You can also buy food with it too. We were in Shibuya, so we were like right next to Shinjuku. If you don't know what Shibuya is, it's like in the heart of Tokyo, or maybe we were in the heart of Shibuya. I don't know, we were just mainly in the middle of everything. And we were by the Shibuya crossing, which uh, if you walked around there, there is a shit ton of people. And we went to Gyoen Park, which was really nice. You can see that picture on Instagram. And so throughout the entire trip in Japan, I gained 20 pounds. I weighed 205 from losing weight from the keto diet, and I ended at 225 when I came back. So I ate a lot of ramen. My favorite food was katsudon. I love the katsu curry, the takoyaki, the sushi, like literally anything there I, I could eat every day. It was, it was amazing.
I think that's mainly it for the summary of the experience. Uh, I usually answer questions about the Japan trip in my stream, so if you ask in the in the stream, I'll try to answer it, but a lot of questions get asked over and over, so I'll just do my best at that part. Overall, uh, we were gone for like around three weeks, and my sub count for Twitch actually went from 2k to uh, 1300, and that kind of gives you a perspective on people that stream, because the reason why they don't want to stop streaming is because they lose money but honestly i'm fine with it and i'm my mental state's in a happier place because i really really enjoyed japan and i'm really happy that i got to go now I'm, i can start fresh and have a very you know outside the box kind of look in this next part of the vlog is going to be more about league which is why it's important that i have that fresh state of mind instead of me being like ah oh, fuck league ah oh, fuck league ah oh, fucking re <laughs> dumbass teammates dumbass like people around the community like it's just oh god so this is going to focus on the really controversial part and i know a lot of you guys are probably league viewers because that's where mainly everything comes from for me so we're gonna <laughs> go bit by bit we're gonna actually look at twitter guys so yesterday i made this tweet I tried playing League off stream alone and I instantly regret it. What I meant by that is I played it and I got a huge headache and I had two losses. In a month from now, I think I want to play some League, then I'll say the same thing again. Now, the purpose of this tweet wasn't to like, it was just like explaining my thoughts, you know. I wasn't trying to like cry out or complain and like baby rage about God, I hate this fucking game. It was just a simple, it was just like a tweet because you know on Twitter, that's that's what you use it for to say your thoughts and it was received very poorly as some may expect because my whole career is based off on league of legends so when will you stop crying about it man so that that sentence is towards a lot of my stuff when i say about league i tweet about like i uninstalled league you dumb fuck stop asking me to play it because you know i get harassed every single day to play league we get it you don't like league then don't play it simple as that if people bug you you play then ignore them you're like 25 26 no come on man lol <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> well first of all it's my twitter so if I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to tweet it, obviously. Second of all, yeah, I don't like League, but I also like it. It's kind of a love-hate thing. I've been considering playing it since next season. And because I went to Japan, and if some of the people that follow me actually paid attention to what I'm saying and what I'm doing instead of uh, getting very butthurt like this, then they wouldn't feel that way. A uh, simple thing to do is if you don't like the tweet, then you should unfollow me right or is that is does that make too much sense and then he goes you're 25 26 i don't think age matters that much in the first place because you you see people at like 40 50 years old complaining about shit all day you know i don't think it matters what age you are everyone's gonna find shit to complain about i think i think that can like speak for itself right <laughs> everyone's gonna complain about shit no matter what no one's ever gonna be at a state where it's like i'm happy in life all the time there's always gonna be something wrong no one is perfect and you know my twitter is there for me to like tweet out stuff that i think or what is twitter for <laughs> what do you guys use twitter for you know that's that's just like the normal every day. Now, if I use this format to respond to this person, I would be like, I would use, when are you, why, why are you crying about me crying? And then at the same time, if you don't like League, then don't play it. Then what I could say is, if you don't like me tweeting about it, then don't follow me. People bug you play to play it, ignore them. Okay, then ignore my tweet. <laughs> and then the age thing, like, you know, it's just... <laughs> this is going to be one of the many things. I'm at the point where I can get content from looking at my own tweets. 
And I know not everyone sees it, and I kind of want to share with you guys to give my point of view because it's honestly content with think itself. It's like reacting to videos, reacting to comments. For the most part, that was the only comment that was kind of troll. Everything else was kind of like pretty positive actually, or or relatable, which is why a lot of people uh, like the tweet. There's one. There's one that. Uh, there's one tweet or reply that got me. Oh, uh, here's one of them. I think you not playing League says more about your mental state than the game. Discern that difference. <laughs> I think my mental state's in a pretty good place now that I'm not playing it because then I don't have to deal with idiots like <laughs> you know. I think it was a reply to this. Uh, here we are. We don't take offense of it and I'm completely fine with you not wanting to play LOL. Okay, seeing you enjoying life in other ways playing League makes me happy too. Okay, but every forced post about you not liking League or, or against the cancerous part of your community. I agree with most of that, yeah. But then it comes back to the point of my Twitter. I feel like that's kind of a bad thing to lay back on. While it's true I should stop tweeting about it, the thing is it'll almost never go away, no matter how much I ignore it. And as a human being that gets annoyed by a lot of this shit, it's like, I can't just ignore it, dude. It's like being constantly slapped in the face and being like, ah, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Ah, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Ah, shit, whatever, man. Ah, shit, that one kind of hurt. Dang. And then someone being like, why are you complaining? Just ignore it. <laughs> so, that was for the recent tweet on League. I deleted League of Legends from my computer, stop asking me to play, you dumb fucks. This was a result of me being harassed every day, harassed in chat, being called dead streamer because I don't play League. The reason why I know they're League viewers when they say dead streamer is because they were there to watch me for League, and now that I'm not playing it, they're upset and complaining about it. <laughs> so, the first thing is, nice way to treat the fans. <laughs> so... The real fans, in my opinion, are the ones that would say this, and I liked it. Most Dyrus fans are on board of this. Dyrus has been a lot happier since not playing it, so yes, fuck League. I completely agree that is exactly how I feel, and that's how a lot of the closer fans feel about it. Well, this is completely different from what he just said, and Kiori got destroyed for it. Well, I, while I do agree that the way Kiori handled it could have been better, and I think that he knows himself, the way I've been treated and how he's been treated is kind of, you know, it kind of makes sense. And then this is just the meme. <laughs> he's been dealing with the Donkey Clone thing for a while. Like, honestly, I don't, I'm going to stay away from that. <laughs> he's just memeing. All right, a lot of people that support me, Skara. Oh, here's a good one. So, Stir played a lot of Team Fortress 2, and he keeps telling people to stop asking about it, and he did it for two years. So, even if I ignore League for two years, people will still ask for it. So, whether I talk about it or not, it's not going to really change anything. I might as well do what I feel that's right. Two years, my god, man. No matter what I do, this will keep happening. Goes to show how shut their game has become. I do think that League has not been going down to the right path. But it's like a combination of the game and the community. And this, like a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you guys is, or I've been showing you guys is going to kind of be like, oh, <laughs> I see. I see that's what you mean about the community. It's honestly not that many. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It's pretty funny. You are no longer... The, honestly, most of the stuff that's liked is mostly support. And that's what I really appreciate it. So while there's a lot of negative stuff, there's a lot of overwhelming support. Now oh, here's one. See? That's good. This is what people should do. This is exactly what people should do. This guy? Good. That's all you have to do. Now, granted, it's, uh, it's kind of an attention thing. But the thing is... That's what people should do. If you don't like it, you should unfollow. And, you know, after a certain point, as someone who's been on Twitter for a long ass time, unless it's like a not very populated post, I will usually zone out most tweets that are below five likes. Is that an egoist thing? It, it's kind of like, um, I've just read so much of the same shit that it's just filtered. 
or maybe I don't have the patience for it. Oh, this is the big, the big one. Someone said something that annoyed me, and I told them to suck my dick, and then I got banned from Twitter for a day. So those days were definitely lit. I stopped playing League for my mental health. So when people say people supported me for League, League basically made me. I understand that. You know, it's kind of pointing out the sky is blue. There's a lot of people that use their argument to like, oh, dude, don't talk shit about League. Oh, don't talk shit about our goddamn cancerous community. Just play League, man. Don't talk shit about it. This game made you. You owe it everything. You know, I'm not I'm not a slave to the game. I played League because I enjoyed it a lot. It gave me a lot, and I'm truly grateful for that. But the thing is, I can't just sit here every day and take all these fucking slaps to the point where I'm just fucking bruised. I gotta, like, I gotta fucking clap back in, like, some way. I do it in the most passive way possible, and people get super offended and butthurt, like, millions more times than I do. Now, I know I'm no not perfect or i'm no angel when it comes to that but holy shit dude it is so bad and i still don't understand why there's people out there that can't understand that and that comes to the argument of it's just the internet man <laughs> just deal with it forehead uh, okay so one of the reasons why i stopped playing league was this really bad change uh, the banner change and the gold funneling thing that was the most unfun thing i've ever dealt with and so my tolerance just went to an all-time low, and I just didn't want to play anymore. Um, the other reason was I was playing on Europe because there's a bunch of people on Europe that think I wouldn't hit Challenger. It's actually really hard to hit Challenger on Europe because um, there's much more players. And on top of that, when you ha play with high ping, it's pretty hard. It's not so hard playing at like top level because you have good teammates. The reason why it's hard is because it's just a mental battle fighting against the idiots in the same elo that are also trying to hit the same level. Like Diamond 5 through Diamond 1 to Masters are all people that are trying to hit Challenger, right? Well, there's people that will single-handedly ruin your game. It just gets really toxic in Europe. Europe West solo queue is honestly the most toxic environment I've ever been with. Now, it's true that I think that in Europe, players are better overall. There's more, like, a higher... There's a higher quantity of better players, but there's also a higher quantity of worse players. And because it's been so... Like, the game's been played so much in Europe with that many people, like, people just care more, and that's why they're better averagely. I don't think they're so much better to the point where I wouldn't be able to hit um, at least masters with the ping, but the thing is I didn't want to put up with like all the stupid fucking comments about it. There's people that commented on me never, like after I retired, they thought I would never hit Challenger. I hit Challenger for three seasons on two different accounts and they still don't think I wouldn't hit it for the next season if I wanted to. It's absolutely <laughs> mindless. Another thing that I want to deal with, so Yasuo, otherwise known as Mo, he hit Masters on Europe, and even though he hit it, I looked at the comments, and they're like, oh, you just got carried. Oh, it's just like, the community is just so AIDS. I, I <laughs> let me, let me pull up some of the comments. Now, I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it with, I can't even see the ping, I guess 90 ping. That's pretty good. Playing Yasuo on 90 ping is actually... <laughs> you just, you're, you're not allowed to make a lot of mistakes. God, I'm glad no one saw that. Until he gets his other accounts masters, I will not be satisfied. Can't escape EU Diamond. Climb easy in NA solo queue and transfer account. It's definitely easy to climb in NA, but not as easy as uh, this person would think. Lots of bronze and silver mentality. I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, but that's what people... They'll, people will use every excuse in the book. Let's say he does hit Challenger. Like, people will just downplay him and use the same excuse. So the thing is, you never win. You he, he, he work so hard to fight through all the toxicity, all the flame, all the, like, you know, mess-ups to get to Masters with 90 ping. And even if he hit Challenger, these people say the same thing over and over. And it's just like people like this everywhere. Now, normally you're like, 
okay, we should stop paying attention to these people. But the thing is, <laughs> you can't. Every Twitch chat, anyone can make an account and be like, you're fucking, you say some alt dumb shit, right? Or w say something like all this stuff, right? People will be like, oh, just ignore him. Oh, just ban him. Those make a new account. Or if you decide not to look at your chat, it's like, oh, dude, why don't you look at your chat? You just never win. You just never win when it comes to this shit. And that's why I just didn't want to fucking deal with it. Because people are just so self-entitled in so many different ways. It's just so... Ugh. God. And people call me toxic. I am toxic, but it's for a good reason. When you read comments like that thousands of times, it's just... There's got to be a place where you got to step up or you, it's just like, it'll never go away. You just have to vent. You have to filter. Anyways, on top of that, people coming to my stream say stupid shit because they're ha unhappy with me playing other games. I think you guys already get the point with that. Uh, the dead stream comment, the, I don't know, just some, just, just a bunch of fucking kids. Um, as for banning people, like I said, they could just make new accounts. Um, you can't really ban people on YouTube and either. So I don't always look through a lot of YouTube comics. I know YouTube comments is kind of like Twitch chat sometimes, but you know, even through all of that, there is a lot of overwhelming positivity. I'm just saying that the little cracks in these negative tweets, after a while, like, it does affect a person. You yourself as a viewer watching right now have the power to influence someone, whether it's a small influence or a big influence. Like, you guys have the power. Not, a, not like, a ton of power, but it's just, like, every little bit matters, which is why I appreciate the positive parts of the community a lot. The funny stuff, the memes, and, you know, when you support a streamer, that's really important. Even though sometimes they kind of, they look at it and be like, oh, thanks, man, because they've been supported so much, you know, so the impact is lessened. The more it happens, the less painful it is, and that's all, that also applies to, well, the less effect that it has, and for the negative part, the less pain it is. Um, the reason why I'm getting all this out in this vlog for this video is because, yeah, getting harassed every day. So I just wanted to get this off of my chest. Oh yeah, so someone recommended ban the word league. <laughs> I banned the word league and people purposely put periods or threes in the, in the league. And that pisses me off even more because they know what they're doing. And it's just super fucking irritating. My god. So I tried banning the word league. I've perma banned a lot of people. Then I unbanned the word league because it shouldn't be a banned word and people can get around it if they want to. Pros and cons of being a league streamer. Uh, the pros, you get views, money, easy effortless content. I play a game on league and the editor just edit and upload the video. It's like effortless it's like fucking reaction videos except you're actually playing the game making uh league fans happy you know that's something that i've wanted i wanted to make the league fans happy with my league play uh opportunities a meme because you know we're all dead inside from playing too much video games uh playing with my friends on league i don't have too many friends on league it's mostly just mutuals that kind of all do their own thing dual queuing can also get rough too because communication's important and you know, you kind of lose friendships by playing with friends too much in League. <laughs> uh, here's the cons, and which you probably already heard for the most part. Harassment, uh, stupidity, I mean that kind of happens with every game, it's not just League. Burnout, I've been playing League for like 8 years, so it, it's, it's understandable and reasonable that I should just stop playing, because I played it too long. But people are like, dude, League made you, keep playing League. Dude, if I keep playing League, my mental state will go so bad I want to kill myself. Not, not to like say it in a super bad. I, I'm just saying as like it is what it is, you know. So that's why I'm in a better me mental state now because I'm not playing the game and I just want a vacation. So I'm coming back with a clear mind. Uh, relying on Riot's balance team. So this is how I feel about the balance team. Like, like I said before, there are good people in the balance team, but I also truly believe that there is dumbasses on the balance team that somehow get their ridiculous ideas approved 
And when pro players and the community gives feedback for the game, they kind of listen, not as much as they used to. Let's just say this. It's easy to complain, but hard to find a solution. So at the very least, don't fuck up the game more than it already is. I'm not the only one who feels this way. I mean, I'm sure it's said, been said millions of times, but that's another con. The happiness of how much you enjoy the game also depends on the balance team. But honestly, I don't think they could fix it anymore at this point. Just make a new game already. Or maybe just wait till next season. That's what I've been waiting for. Riot Sound Department. So, I've been at Riot Sound Department in the first two years of League. All of those guys, like, I don't know if they still work there now, but I, I asked them a genuine question is like, do, what do you guys think about putting announcers, like from characters, like let's say Jax tells you double kill. I'd be like, hell yeah, man, that's fucking cool. They told me to knock on the door and open the door of like the head of sound department and he was recording something. When the doors close, you're not supposed to open it. And the moment I did it, I asked, hey man, you think it'd be cool if we could have like character announcer packs? And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, okay. I closed the door and everyone in the sound department was laughing at me. Now this was like a long ass time ago, but what this told me is that there are people that I don't know if they filtered it out already, but it's just gotten so big that no one really cares as much. And I guess it's easier said than done because there's higher priorities and stuff like that if riot released announcer packs they would make a lot of money it was something that i really wanted but of course i'm just a player i'm just a kid who what do i know right sounds and games is super appealing to me changing my sound pack from english to japanese or anything else makes it feel like it's a completely different game sometimes and it's all about the experience what what you want to hear so sounds and video games is one of the underrated things for me when it comes to like when developers prioritize what a good video game is they always think it's the graphics but this is fucking shallow getting camped top in league gameplay the two versus one meta fucking ruined league for me i used to love one versus oneing now i have this meme of getting camp top because i don't i just don't have the tolerance to deal with it league reddit mod team so since the beginning of league reddit at the start it was okay because the community was pretty good but mods got power hungry as, as the game became more popular and i'm sure riot controls reddit too i mean i don't don't quote me on that i don't have any evidence like i'm pretty sure that's how it is well i guess they can't really control some mods there are some mods that are actually brain dead and I, I'm trying to say that in the nicest way possible because that's just how much pain I felt from just the reddit. Um, there's a lot of good mods though but like I said with every group of people there's the people that actually know what they're doing and there's like the few specific people that just ruin it for everyone else. Kind of a common trend for everything really. Playing on the same service as Shinshin. So, now I don't hate Hashinshin, but I've played against Hashinshin since the beginning of time for League. And seeing all these people gather behind him and support him for, you know, top lane sh sucks, his champion sucks. Now, let's go into the pros and cons of Hashinshin. <laughs> if you don't know who he is, he's a top player that mainly plays Jax. He plays like other bruisers like Aatrox or whatever. And, you know, granted though, some of those champs do suck ass. A lot of things that he says is accurate, but it's to the point where he rides on the accurate claims to get what he wants. There are some champions that are so fucking overpowered and unfun to play with, but that's where adapting comes in. The reason why Shinshin fails at League it is only because his mental capacity to tolerate jungle ganks and getting flamed by people in his chat and like... He's a bullet train with no no breaks, basically. He is a player who has good mechanics, but fails in terms of suffering from ganks and other shit. It's a very common top laner thing. It's just he doesn't handle it as well as other top laners do. I don't hate him, like I said, but it's just kind of annoying because I've played pro for so long and I obviously know how the game is played during the time I was pro. And so when people come to me and are like, what do you think about what Hashinshin said? I agree with a good amount of it, but there's just so much stupidity behind it where people are using the excuse of the valid points to bring in their really bad excuses for not having map awareness or not playing the game properly. They want to put all the blame around the balance and not themselves. There are top laners, like in Dom's video, that get 
super high in solo queue in almost all regions but it's just it's just another topic that is just it just gets annoying it's just fucking annoying <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up as a con. It's probably because I watched Dom's video. Finally, to end this vlog, it all comes with the responsibility of being a role model. I'm not the greatest role model, obviously, but everything I do is like amplified by other people. There's people that say that say so many contradicted things, and in the end, it's just the fucking internet. And at the end of the day, I'm just another dude making a vlog complaining about shit that's on my mind. But yeah, that's basically everything. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, leave a message on Twitch chat, Discord, well, mainly the YouTube comments, but I don't always look there. Afflictive also looks at them too, so anyways, if you've watched this vlog for this long, thank you guys very much for watching, and have a nice day. Peace.